So let's talk about some ratios you're going to want to know. And there is a hell of a lot of them. <laughs> so the first one, uh, I guess, aside from the independent assortment and segregation, those are all Mendelian uh, ratios. We're talking in this context of variance from Mendelian laws. So the first ratio that I think needs to be known is classic epistasis. Stasis. I can't spell it to save my life, so if, if that's wrong, I apologize. And there's lots of ways that we can have this. So we can have dominant epistasis, and we can have, I'll put it down here, recessive epistasis. And I'm going to go ahead and just classify the next one as uh, classical. Classic epistasis. Like that wasn't frustrating enough. So the first one is dominant epistasis. And these are all kind of subjective, so keep that in mind. But you get a 12 to 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. For recessive epistasis, the ratio that we see is a 9 to 7 ratio. And then for classic epistasis, I'm just going to clarify that, that what you see there is, and it's kind of a, uh, a I guess, a, a, a usually a linear, in a linear epistasis, I guess to say, is 9 to 3 to 4, as if that wasn't frustrating enough. But epistasis in these contexts that we're talking about is a linear type of a thing. So another type of ratio that you should probably know is the co-dominant and incompletely dominant ratios. So these ratios, kind of interesting. So co-dominant ratio and independent, an incomplete dominance, I don't know why I keep saying independent, they're all a one to two to one ratio depending on the amount of traits that we're talking about in codominance. So let's make some, some kind of, I guess, unique uh, notes that we should make about incomplete dominance, however. When you're incomplete dominant for only one trait, you'll get something kind of unique. You'll get a, and what I mean by this is, so say you have big A, uh, big B, big L, little L, these two here are a dominant recessive relationship, and these two here are uh, incomplete dominant. Um, I, I would assume that it would apply for co-dominance as well, but for this is for only one trait out of two. So out of two. So one out of two in a dihybrid cross, what you get is a six to three to three to two to one to one, which if we rearrange this can be rearranged to a one to two to one. If we put that six in the middle, that's the two here. This is also a one to two to one. Just I'm just arranging it in, uh, I guess, chronological order or order of increasing. So one other thing, and remember, I consider gene interaction to be a branch of epistasis, but gene interaction ratio, gene interactions. So there's, uh, I guess, to anytime you have, and I'll just say this, that in all of these, these are all variations of the independent assortment, nine to three, three to one. All of these are variations of that. So anytime you have a variation of that, you're definitely having something, one of these things going along. But for gene interaction, the two, I guess, examples that were given is a nine to six to one, and then a nine to three to four as well, which is uh, another example of classic epistasis.